Hello, 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 everyone. Happy Monday. How are we? What a day, what a day. <laughs> a lot to talk about today. A lot to talk about. One in the chat, if you can hear me. How is everyone? Let's see who's here. Hello, Ethan's husband. You got here early. <laughs> um, oh, Robert Collins joining from Italy. Thank you very much for joining us. Yes, Robert Collins, I think the Queen should just give up her role as the head of the Church of England. Royal family has become nothing more than a sewer of moral morass. Perfectly put and very, very true. Yes, Pendizzi. <laughs> you guys came with the shade before the podcast even started. They're digging a hole for themselves. A hole straight to hell. Ugh. Yeah, Tiara is not going to change who Camilla is. Hello, hello. Hope you're having a wonderful day too. Hello, Sandra, Lydia, Annie, got the drinks. <laughs> hello, Lane. Hello, Colleen, Bonnie, Church Nelly. See who else is here. I can see a couple of new names. Hello, C Mac, Denise Jones, how are you? Uh, Betty, hello, Anna, hi. I see here. Yes, the bar is open and we're going to need a lot of alcohol tonight, <laughs> even though it's Monday. By the way, my poor little finger is finally almost healed. But you can literally see, like, even while it's healing, you can see all the layers that were, like, chomped off by the knife. And to celebrate its healing, I got the most pink and Barbie set of acrylic nails you can imagine. Um, hello, Beverly. Okay, I think all the usuals are here. Hello, Sherry. Elaine, sorry, Julianne. Mm. All right, I think all the usuals are here and people are slowly, slowly streaming in. So, yeah, I think we can get started. Oh, well, well. Um, so yesterday when I was doing my live somebody did actually put in the chat that the announcement had been made um via an uh, official letter by the queen that camilla would be a uh, queen consort but i i hadn't the, the news hadn't filtered to me yet so i wasn't sure whether or not this was confirmed but it has now been confirmed a letter was written by the queen and i mean it's a, it's a slap in the face really um, it seems like they just want to go full speed ahead and they feel like they can try and shove this down the British public's throats and not get any backlash for it or they just, I, I don't, I don't even know what's happening in the palace right now. I can only imagine that um hello uniquely me <laughs> i can only imagine that they're just so stuck in their own little world that they think they can do whatever they want they think that we're not going to remind them constantly that camilla will never be diana she won't even be liked on a basic level like okay let, let's not even try and go to Diana. She won't even be liked at all. And, you know, there are people that still actually 
um, very much like Charles for whatever reason. <laughs> but I don't think that necessarily extends to Camilla. And despite a two decade long plus campaign to try and make her something, they failed. Megan came in and in a shorter amount of time made more impact and gained a bigger fan base than even Camilla did. So we're gonna get in again sorry, we're gonna get into why uh, this has happened and what could have gone on um behind the scenes. But it's just I I'm, I'm you can probably tell I'm just I'm struggling to find words to to just describe how ridiculous this is and why they don't see it's ridiculous. Because to my understanding, the original, not that it would have been any better, but to my understanding, the original agreement was that Camilla would be princess consort. But I think they would have been better off just actually not giving her a title um, at all. You know? Because then I feel like there wouldn't be so much backlash now, because now everybody just keeps on bringing up Diana. Um, Amy, you said this is a massive mistake, a dud move, like all of the PR communication strategy, the on royals live inside their own echo chamber. Yes, it's a case of the, of the Emperor's clothes for the Windsors. Oi. Um, Catherine. Hi, Duchess. It's sad when you value the other woman over the wife. Harry Lander, great listen from his mother, value your wife. Yeah. And really and truly, like, what has... What has Camilla actually done or offered? And I don't want to hear... This is what I keep hearing from people, like, oh, she did so much work. Like, no, she showed up to events and she does not live in the spirit of the charities that she claims to support. Like, she's meant to support some domestic violence... Um, charity but I don't actually think I've ever heard Camilla oh, correct me if I'm wrong but I don't think I've actually ever heard Camilla give very heartfelt don't think she'd be cap capable of doing it but even a PR heartfelt um apology um and statement regarding what Diana was put through I don't even think that she has the humility to be able to do that um, uniquely me, yes, I know the Queen's time is short, so they are preparing the public. I don't think the, the public is prepared for this. I don't think they're, they're prepared for what's coming for um, the tampon prince to be king or what's coming um, after that, after even Charles is gone with William and um, Catherine and the rose bushes. <sighs> uh, Sonia, I'm wondering if the Queen is already on life support. Well, there were videos of her recently with the corgis um, and her looking at cards from children. So I don't know how actually recent they um, were filmed. Um, I don't know whether they were filmed a while ago and they're just releasing them now. But those are the most recent images that I've seen of, of Her Majesty. Um, yeah, Amy, they're surrounded by psychopaths and foolish PR people. It's an absolutely crazy move. And the timing of it as well. Ruth Lopez, I bet Liz Jules that Chuck made a deal with her. Cal Miller gets a crown and Andy's promised care and protection for the rest of his worthless life. Maybe especially with Charles wanting the so-called slim down monarchy after the queen is gone, the, you know, Andrew is pretty much on his own. So that actually quite, that actually makes sense. Um, what you've said there, Ruth. Yeah, cookies and cream. What happened in the palace is stupidity run amok. I saw a quote the other day that, um, it was something along the lines of when a clown takes over, the palace, he doesn't become a king, the court becomes a circus, and that's pretty much what we have now. Uh, Drew for Dilly, I noticed the Queen's neolinguistic programming, I know you will support them as, <laughs> as you have me, blah, blah, blah. I actually don't think that the Queen wrote that statement at all, that 100% sounded like Clarence House, 
Um, I'm not co-signing the conspiracy theorists, but I'm just saying what they have been saying, that the letter probably wasn't even signed by her. That's not me, that's just what the conspiracy theorists are saying. I'll let you make of that whatever you want. Um, Josie A, possibly they don't want another scandal with Charles making her queen consort. Quite possibly this will be one less obstacle for Charles to have her approval. Mm. Yeah, Camilla will always be known as a homewrecker. There's not really, not really much they can do about that um, because it's a title that's well deserved. You know, pretty much ghastly. I mean, that picture that you can see in the corner of Diana quite young there, you know, she pretty much gaslit her from day one. <laughs> yes, that hat looks like a bird taking off, but this is probably one of the few times Camilla actually looks pretty decent, but it was the wedding day. Like you've never seen her with all the makeup and the injectables and all the rest of it. Simply Vega, they are baiting the public to see if they will accept Camilla. I mean, <laughs> did they not know that they would never accept her before? <laughs> I feel like the reaction after the crown would have let them know. I mean, didn't they didn't they block the commenting um on Instagram after the crown came out? Because I remember so yes, yes, now my memory um is coming back. So after the crown came out, people people went to the um, Clarence House Instagram page and started literally just started commenting Diana, nothing nothing like particularly mean, and they blocked the comment section just for that. Um, I don't know why they had to announce this, especially as they will do whatever they want and are having this drag on to wind us up. Well, um, I think you've got to bear in mind that. The case um, with Andrew is back in the news again. Um, and I mean, it's just a cover up to so many things. Um, maybe they're afraid to use Meghan too much. I don't think they are because they're definitely at it again with Meghan and Harry. And I've got a couple of slides that I wanted to go through today. So. Um, yeah, Joanne, they have tunnel vision. They have tunnel vision. Gwen, who's advising them? I've got no idea. The same men in grey suits that were advising them before. <laughs> She's done a lot of work. <laughs> well, apparently she was doing a lot of work the day before Charles is um, Charles and Diana's wedding. She was doing a lot of work on Charles. So, yeah. She's worked all right. These people can't read the room, it'll be their undoing. Well, it was almost their undoing when Diana died. I mean, I think we forget the level to which the British public not only had a, had a breakdown, but almost in that breakdown, almost pretty much took the monarchy down. Yeah, she was involved in the abuse of Charles' much younger wife. How the hell can she uh, represent female abuse charity? They always project in that weird way, don't they? It's just really gross. Um, just give me a sec. I'm going to just pull up the slides and then I'll come back to your comments later. But this is what they will just never met, um, match up to. They will never match up to this no one in that family look at this look at that boy standing on his friend's back <laughs> to give diana flowers like that is a type like me that that boy who's not the one who's standing on the friend's shoulders but the, the friend who's propping him up on his shoulders that would be me propping up someone else to give flowers to megan i would do that i would not do that for anyone else I mean, just look at how gorgeous she looks in that dress. Oi. And, you know, I've said this before. The royal family knows that none of them, none of them will ever get the reception that Diana did in life or death. 
and after death because it's been 25 years and Diana still her memory her work her legacy has not faded in fact it's probably more potent now in the face of everything that Harry and Meghan have been through than it's ever been in the last 25 years and it's so sad to see her firstborn fall throwing her under the bus calling her paranoid oh, let's go to um here so here you can see that the not so invisible contract has been in the works um, for a while. And you have in the middle, Camilla with Arthur Edwards, who's a royal um, photographer. He was the one that was crying that he never got to um, got, get too close to Harry, uh, you know, saying, you know, um, Harry, you know, Harry was one of the lads and you could just laugh with him. And it's just like, you are a photographer. Your job is to take photos. He's not your friend. He never liked you. You know, get it out of your head. And this this is why that picture in the middle is why these royal rodents are so arrogant and are so, like, they think they're so special. And this is what Harry did not want for Meghan. He did not want um, these rats to get close to Meghan, to get close to his children. I actually saw a video of Arthur Edwards and Camilla dancing with each other. Like, it was just so cringe. And who would want this? Who would want to be this close to people who, if they could make a buck, would easily throw you under the bus? And on one side here, sorry, on, on Camilla's side, um, that headline that you can see, Queen gave Camilla, um, uh, Queen gave Camilla plan her blessing years ago. That was by uh, Rebecca English, um, who we know is on team with Kensington Palace. And the on the other side, on Arthur's side, that's in the orange, yellowy writing, Camilla, my sadness at losing family and friends to cancer. She wrote that exclusively for the Daily Mail. So they have been giving exclusives and access to the Daily Mail. They have been uh, courting the press. Um, I'm go back to your comments. With sorry, Beverly, would this make Camilla Queen in the future? She, she can speak on this, but can't make comments to rags. British media to stop harassing Madame Duchess or let people know that she is paying for Duchess. Sorry, I didn't quite understand your comment there. Um. Mary H, maybe the Queen putting this out for Camilla before Harry's book come out that they fear. Yeah, I think they do fear that book, but there's nothing, I, I don't think that Harry is going to say anything overly explosive. I think that we've learnt by now that Harry speaks his truth, but it never comes from a place of malice. And I don't know if there's anything really that Harry is going to say that we don't already know. Um, I don't know, I would be very surprised, and he has every right to, but I would be very surprised if he did come out and say that I was very hurt um, by Camilla, that, you know, we got into rows or anything like that. Because to me, at least from the outside, it looks like Harry accepted, it looks like he accepted Camilla and just did his best to un accept that this is the situation. and there's nothing that he could do about it. So there's nothing he could do about it, but to accept it and try to make peace with the situation. And I think that's what he did. So I don't know. I just don't see him coming out swinging for Camilla. Um, Yvonne, why can't she be called Princess Camilla since Prince Philip was never called King or Queen Consort. I've got no idea. It's interesting that a lot of the papers, though, are going with Camilla will be Queen as opposed to Queen Consort, because it is Queen Consort. But that's probably um, Clarence House's PR instructing them to go with the Queen title. Um, 
Jennifer, this all Charles is doing, mummy has to please him since Andrew is out. The pressure was put on, I think. Yeah. Yes, Bonnie, we have another season of The Crown to watch. Actually, it's, it's two seasons. They're splitting the Diane, well, the rest of the Diane is into two seasons. <laughs> so we're going to get this year. Um, and then, I mean, if, given what I suspect about the Queen's um, health, um, you know, she could be nearing her time pretty soon. So if not, you know, this year, maybe next year, and can you imagine... We've got two seasons of The Crown to just remind everyone of just how horrible this family is. They're not going to get peace over the next two years. Mm -hmm. uh, Josie, Camilla was his first choice. He deep loved her. Courtier told him she was good for LA, not as future queen. Possibly she would have always been his choice were it not for that. Well, I just don't understand why they wouldn't have just had the sense to um just let Charles marry her in the first place I mean this is an institution that the British public accepts that uh, Charles can be friends with the likes of Jimmy Savile so why would they not have accepted that he wanted to be with Camilla <laughs> they had to drag Diana into their dramas and when she ended up being the only thing, the only redeeming thing about the institution, she then um, she then gets backed into a corner and they try to break her into pieces. Oh, yeah. Um, Andrine, Camilla hasn't done no more than William and Catherine. I think Elizabeth did this to make peace with Charles and her relationship of being an AWOL mother. But she's 50 years too late. Yeah. Mm. Amy, how will they handle the crown season five? I hope that I hope they go for it, to be honest with you. Because after the way that the firm was acting um over the last season, and I maintain that the last season was not harsh at all and actually humanized Charles. So I have no idea what it is that they were. Um, getting their knickknacks and a twist for. Um, I assume that they just wanted to um, just cause cause some drama because um, um, Harry and Meghan's Netflix deal. But there was no reason to go after the last season of The Crown because it wasn't that harsh on the royals at all. It missed out so many things. Like if you watch um, Diana in in her own words, there are so many things that they missed out that were really um, vital. So I think that they're really going to go after them for the next season of The Crown. Um, Jackie, they probably considered passing The Crown straight to William, but their performance is so dismal, they've chosen Charles instead. Well, in a way, William actually benefits because he knows that... Um, I, I believe that William wants his rose by his side, eventually. And this actually kind of buys him some time because it's not going to be an easy task to get the public used to the idea that um, that it's not Kath that Catherine might not be the queen consort, that it could be another woman. Um, okay, so that was that. Then we have, I've oh, got so many slides. Yeah, <laughs> people were just not holding back at all. You know, we've got uh, the Duchess Boom saying Rose Hanbury on her way to collect her tiara and insignia after seeing that the Queen is now promoting side chicks. And Rachel saying, I can't help but think that Britain is not ready for King Charles and Queen Camilla and that we are going to have a complete nervous breakdown as a country when change comes. And <clears throat> Mad Hurry saying, no wonder Prince William has accepted Queen Camilla with delight. In 15 to 25 years, England will welcome King William and Queen Rose in the same way. So I actually think 
<clears throat> that William is loving this. Because he probably thinks, well, if they can accept Camilla, they can accept my rose. Hello to everybody joining us. Sonia, yeah, the taxpayers should have a say about Camilla. Um, Gillian, I feel as though the UK is ready to embrace Camilla because they have a new woman to hate on in Megan. Yeah, and Megan will now be the punching bag to distract from Camilla. <laughs> yes, Hidden Beauty, we live in a crazy world. The home wrecker is Queen Consort, please. I mean, the Queen is the head of the church. This is basically co-signing this type of behaviour. Yes, season five will be the dragging of all draggings. And if Netflix doesn't bring the dragging of all draggings, I'm unsubscribing. No, I'm loving their Korean dramas right now. Um... But yeah, that's that. And also... Yep, more shade. Yeah, so this is another thing I want I want to mention. Um, Prince Charles actually set up trust funds for Camilla's children um, when they were 34 and 37. So fully, not even like um, <laughs> children, they were grown as working adults. And when the British press were going mad at um, then 36-year-old Prince Harry stated that his father cut him out unexpectedly, I wonder why this wasn't mentioned. So the Parker Bowles children got trust funds set up for them, but Charles cut off Prince Harry. What a dad. Uh, and um, this other commentator saying, I see so many mad people in the comments like they forgot how the Church of England was founded. It's just English history repeating itself. Wait when William governs with Rose as consort. The universe has it that way so the tradition will continue and I absolutely I absolutely believe that that will happen how that is going to unravel and unfold I've got no idea it's just going to be the drama of all dramas but it is coming it is coming boy I'm hoping I'll be gone by then I probably will Um, what would happen to Meghan and Harry when Charles does ascend to the throne? Well, they're not working members of the royal family anymore and they own, um, they own their own property and they make their own money. So unless they want to torture themselves and go back, I don't really think anything will happen to them. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe... At the very most, I don't know, maybe he'll try to take their titles. But I don't think anything more than that. And it won't matter if he does anyway. But I don't think he will. <clears throat> Let's see, Lily. The men in grey suits are still getting it wrong. They need to be reminded we live in the 21st century. <laughs> Times have changed since their social media. They can no longer hide BS. Yeah. <clears throat> Say it louder for the men in grey suits in the back. <clears throat> yeah, Amy, I think the Queen's funeral will pale in comparison to Diana's. <clears throat> I really do think that um, we're really going to know exactly how the British public feel about the royal family when that happens. Yeah, Amy, because just because the Royal Rota love Camilla doesn't mean the public do. They are nothing more than paid hacks. So we can rest 
assured that the truth will come out and people's true feelings about um, <clears throat> the royal family will eventually come to light. Mm. Beverly, what are people of colour in the UK feeling about all of this, the ones that work? I don't know what people of colour feel specifically, um, but I think if you ask most people, they will say that, you know, Diana's people's princess and they're not particularly fond of Camilla. So I, th I think we'll only truly see how people really feel when the time actually comes, when it's actually time to put that crown on um, Camilla's head. <clears throat> And you see here also, like, you know, more more collaborations with the press. You see Charles giving that exclusive to the Daily Mail. And we've got Re Rebecca English here tweeting about an exclusive. You know, you've got the Daily Mail talking about how Duchess of Cornwall was once seen as a problem, now as a solution. <sighs> solution when she's one of the most disliked women and has been one of the most disliked women in Britain for the last two decades. <clears throat> and I did sorry I did have another slide it seems to have ah yes you know people just letting it be known that Diana is the one you know Camilla is going to be crown queen but let's not forget who should have and is the people's queen and Dr Shola always coming with the heat and the truth if Princess Diana were alive today, I don't think she would care if Camilla was title queen. Um, <clears throat> and Diana herself said that she wanted to be queen of people's hearts. Um, Diana would be on such a stratospheric level of fame, legacy, relevance, good works and reputation that would have rivaled the um, surpassed Queen Elizabeth. Royal family would simply pell in significance. Amen. <clears throat> Dr. Shola, you're the one. And it's so true, even now, in, in her death, Princess Diana is. This is why, like, I made videos like the, um, like the legacy video and trying to keep Diana's legacy alive because it's just so important. We should never allow these people to erase just how special she was. <clears throat> Yes, Del, Harry did the right thing, keeping them from his little family. Because can you imagine now? Like, I don't want to even think about what it would be like if Harry and Meghan were still there. <clears throat> oh, women on loose women um, who are claiming that Meghan should learn from Camilla by saying quiet and taking abuse. Oh, those loose women women are a bunch of pickmishas who are just so jealous of women like Megan because they know that they could never measure up to someone like Megan. Her beauty, her poise, and the fact that despite being a strong-minded, independent, vocal, feminist, um, the sixth in line still chased after her, still courted her. So they're just, they're mad mad because they could they can never be anything close to what Megan is. Um, the Camilla situation will never go well with the majority of Australians. They never liked her. It's official. She's um, their queen. Yeah. And we all remember that one of the reasons or the beginning of the um, smear campaign against Diana really amped up after the Australia tour with Charles because she was just so popular there. And in fact, that leads me on to the next thing that I wanted to talk about. Uh, New Zealand, because now is the time to raise your hand if you've ever felt personally victimised by the colonising Windsors. And the Maori party <laughs> of New Zealand is now calling for um, to remove the British royal family as head of state and <clears throat> the recentering of the country around um, their 
um, their own traditional leaders, I'm assuming. Um, and I did see this one tweet saying, talking about Elizabeth when she became queen, visiting her colonial subjects in Kenya. It was also around this time that the Mayu Mayu, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, uprising against colonial rule began, to which Her Majesty's government unleashed a campaign of poor savagery to crush the rebellion. And this is what just annoys me so much when I see this blind worship towards Betty. You know, I was having a conversation with a, a friend the other day, an African friend, you know, and she was just like, oh, you know, let auntie, she, she called the queen auntie. She called the person whose golden piano she's paying for with her taxpayer money, auntie. That's not your auntie. But anyway, she was like, oh, just let auntie live. I hope she gets to enjoy her jubilee. I'm just like, this woman has done nothing for you, nothing for the working class people of Britain. The cult-like worship of the Queen and the royal family deserves its own faculty in a university somewhere. And we just need to get the finest sociologists, anthropologists, neuroscientists, like we should hook royalists up to machines and just measure their brain activity and just try and understand where this blind worship comes from. Oi. Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> Some of your comments. Hello, Leon. Thanks for joining us. Um, yes, Elaine Parker. Angela Levin is writing the authorized biography of Camilla. Just, just wow. I mean, it's just it's embarrassing, y'all. It is so embarrassing. And, you know, to write that biography, she's going to be given full access. This is exactly why Harry and Meghan should never go back because we know what a stalker Angela Levin is for Harry. She's absolutely obsessed with him. There's actually a video that I um, recorded some time back and it was about um, the women who are obsessed with Megan, um, and it was a video on Camilla, Angela Levin, and Sarah Vine, and I actually uh, dig quite deep into Angela Levin's history um, with her mum. wasn't particularly difficult because she wrote a whole article in the Daily Mail talking about how she hated her mum, but I actually broke it down um, in that um, in that podcast, but I just haven't finished editing it yet because it was quite a long one but I will have that up soon. But it's just disgusting that her, of all people, the person who is known to have been retweeting and liking um, content on Twitter about the Sussexes that was vile by trolls. That's who's writing Camilla's biography. I mean, you just can't make this up. It's unreal. Um, yes, Dale, you can't make a homework into something special. She ain't never going to be nothing special. Yes, Camilla cheapens the crown. My little sister's um, plastic hair clips from Claire's accessories are worth more. Um, Chief Dilly, you would be surprised. It's mostly older people who buy the papers. They still buy them. They still do. Um... Cuckoos and Cream, all the PR stunts on William calling his mother paranoid didn't make a bit of a difference. Um, Camilla, the canine, would never be accepted by the public. No, it, it didn't make a difference. But, but on, on the other hand, I feel like the people who were probably most outraged um, were the people who, to be honest, it was people like us. I think that whole thing about um, William saying that his mother um, was was paranoid I do think that that actually went over most people's heads oh my god Dorothy Ross uh, Dorothy Ross one of these days you're gonna give me a heart attack darling <laughs> you're gonna give me a heart attack <laughs> oh thank you so much darling oh I hope you're having a great Monday oh I appreciate you guys so much 
You guys know how much I just appreciate that you show up and that we've created this little community. But I'm so thankful. Oh, you're so lovely, darling. Thank you so much. Oh, you guys. I'm telling you, by the end of this year, I'm going to have a heart monitor. <laughs> You will make my heart go pump pump the way Harry makes Megan's heart go pump pump. Um, Rosa, I don't agree with you. Harry won't get a book deal for nothing. He will spill some fat beans. Ooh. Do you think that they made him um, promise some exclusives? That's a very good theory, Rosa. Hmm. Didn't actually think about that. Yeah, I suppose if you wanted some extra zeros. But again, I will say, I think that Harry will be slanderous for the sake of being slanderous. He'll just be truthful. Of course, they'll paint it as him being slanderous. And they have amped up, um, they have actually amped up since um, the day before yesterday, a lot of attacks. And we see now Fox News is gonna, you know, is coming in, calling Harry and Meghan D-listers. Um, and also another thing that I've noticed more and more and more is this language that's being used in the press, especially towards Harry and Meghan, but just in general, you know, words like brain dead and deadbeats. I feel like there's almost a deliberate agenda in the media. And this isn't just with Harry and Meghan, but I see it a lot with Harry and Meghan to dumbify smart debate. So because we can't actually find anything um, that is worthy of, of criticising Harry and Meghan for, um, because we can't form a intellectual argument we're just going to sling around playground words and unfortunately this is be becoming more and more normalized because you see it across media now and it's becoming normalized in the way that people talk to each other the way they debate each other very little nuance or intelligence in that conversation it's just this word slinging and I think that the media especially the right-wing media are trying to make this okay and trying to make this normal and you know I, I just find it so hypocritical that Harry and Meghan are now are now being slinged for being silent <laughs> so every every time they say something they get criticized when they're silent they also get criticized it's just they can't win you know I don't know, to be honest, I don't really know why they should comment on the Jubilee, why they would comment on it now. You know, the media may be trying to hype all of this stuff up, you know, ahead of the Jubilee, but what, it's February and the Jubilee is what, March? Sorry, not March, uh, June, July. Like, who would be, who really is getting excited about this now? Who? I guess <laughs> it's, it's, it's months away. And they're just, they're really just like shoving it down our throats. Uh, Kiki baby, this is all Charles is doing. Probably. He's he's ready to take that big fluffy hat from his mummy. Um, Harry won't throw them to the wolves, but I think there will be revelations. I think there will be revelations as well. I think there will be as well. Um... There's one thing in particular that I think he might say, but it's going down the conspiracy theory realm a little bit too much. So I'm just going to wait for the book to come out. <laughs> and, then, and then if I'm right, I'll let you know if my conspiracy theory was right. Um, yeah, Sherry, he accepted his dad tampon got an emotional support. His emotional support, Camilla, as Baron would say. Mm. 
Yes, Beverly, that's a really, really good point. <clears throat> the Queen can make a comment about Camilla, but not about the harassment that Meghan and Harry faced. Mm. <laughs> Kiki said, Netflix said, you want to harass me? I got something for you all. Yeah, they they better come with it for the next season because I'm sorry, they were lazy for season four. They were lazy. They could have gone even more in. <laughs> Simply. The monarchy reminds me of the Terminator self-destruction. It's what we're seeing, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, Angela, Harry can just write about his days in the military and I would still buy his book. Yeah. I can imagine that a lot of it will probably be tied into life lessons. It will be something that everybody can reflect on. Um. Um, can someone please fact check tell us how old Angela Levin is? Why do you want to know how old she is? <laughs> Only estimates of her age. I've got no idea, darling. I don't know, she looks like she's in her, what, 60s, 70s? Um, all of the impossible, I'm with you, not sure the Queen wrote that as well. It feels that the Queen is about to abdicate. I don't know if she'll actually abdicate or if she wants to die on the throne. Because from the way it's going, I feel like she actually wants to pass while on the throne. I don't think she wants to abdicate. Um, Mona, when the series The Crown comes out with season five, this woman about to be crowned over the, the dead body of the Princess of Wales. Hmm. It's going to, then I'm telling you, the next two years, the royal family are about to go through some things. Uh, just to read what's on the screen, um, she, this is in regards to the Queen. She wouldn't be Queen at all if her uncle Edward had been permitted to marry a divorced woman. And as queen, she broke her younger sister's heart, Margaret, by forbidding her to marry the love of her life because he was a divorced man. And to that, the extremely cruel way Diana, Princess of Wales, was manhandled for objecting to a marriage of three. And the callous way her son Harry was ostracised for defending his wife. How much hypocrisy can people stand? <laughs> Good question. Taurus, if Camilla had any self-respect, she would have left Charles long after he got married. Or maybe after she herself got married. I don't think she, um, Camilla really loved her husband. Um, and I don't know if anyone other than someone like Camilla could have loved Charles. So really, they were made for each other. It's just sad that Dana got thrown in the middle of all of this. Yes, Joyce, that's also true. Charles had to marry a virgin, of course. He had already been with a number of women. It was an archaic rule. And I believe, actually, didn't Diana's uncle publicly come out and state and confirm to the whole nation that she was indeed a virgin? It's just so disgusting. Yes, Dale, your comment came at perfect timing. The whole family's a joke. Throw it all away. Throw it all in the Thames River, along with the sewerage that they're throwing in there as well. Yeah, Ruth, it stinks of Chuck. I don't think that she wrote it. Um, well, thank you so much for 400 of you in the chat. Please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already. And subscribe. We are at... Um, seven thousand. I hit 7,300 subscribers today. So we're pretty much on track for about 8,000.
this uh, by the end of this month. So thank you, everyone. Um, Jay Z, Camilla's father was a royal guard, not a royal descendant. She was just not considered good enough. So he, he did as expected and kept screwing her. Yeah. Hmm. Poofa Dilly, you just said when she, Dana, became good for the institution, they backed her into a corner and tried to break her. Sound familiar? <laughs> yeah. It's what they do to all women who. Um, try to show any backbone there was a commentator i'm sorry I, f I forget her name because she does comment quite often and um she did leave a very detailed comment i the video i did a while ago um about um was it either beatrice or eugenie one of them having a podcast for um anti-slavery and i mentioned that it you know was a bit tone deaf regarding the timing but one of the things that that commentator did point out um and i did actually pin her comment because it was quite detailed she said that actually beatrice eugenie and even fergie had done a lot of humanitarian work um before i think uh, fergie had actually gone to turkey but at the time it was um for them it was too much of a political move but basically, you know, even Fergie and the girls at one point had tried to actually do some impactful work, but they didn't like that. And the royal family basically, you know, tried to cover the whole thing. I didn't even know that this had happened until this commentator uh, mentioned this and should put a whole bunch of links to articles and videos. So it's just anyone that actually tries to do anything of any substance, um, they just, especially if it's a woman in the family, they just try to break her down. Because they can't be, they can't actually be seen to be doing anything of substance or doing work. Because then it sets a precedent that they actually have to work. And people are used to thinking that their ribbon cutting and waving is work. They don't want to create a situation where they're actually required to do the type of things that Meghan and Harry wanted to do for the family. Because then the whole illusion and the grift is ruined. Mm. Audrey, I think Harry didn't accept Camilla but went along with it because Harry knew at that time Charles held Harry life in his hands. Yeah, it's a very abusive relationship and abusive uh, power and balance within this, I don't even want to call it a family, unroyal mafia. Yeah, Angela, it's so... Um, so hypocritical that Charles eventually married a divorced woman with children. Not that there's anything wrong with marrying a divorced woman with children. That should be perfectly okay. But this is an institution that said that he couldn't marry a woman um, unless she was a virgin. Mm. Uh, Sonia, the next Queen Consort could have no past relationships, so there would be no ambiguity about the future children. That's why Camilla could not be Charles's wife. Ah, that's an interesting point also. Um, Patricia, Rose is married too, she also has children. Well, when you're king, they will bend the rules, especially by the time it gets to William. But um, allegedly, 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 for the lawyers listening, <laughs> there is a lot of arguments over the paternity of those children. Um, so, and in any case, um, Megan was also divorced and um, was allowed to marry Harry. So I think that there... That, that's about as much modernization as they're willing to do, especially if it allows the future king to do what he wants. Um, Dory, Willie is not as strong as his father. In what way? You mean strong, emotionally strong, 
strong as a leader because I think they're all pretty weak in those regards. Mm. <laughs> Fad Tamar, the Queen has ordered her subjects to pity the former mistress when she is not here, and I uh, don't many, and I doubt many have agreed to it. No, I don't think that many people are going to go along with this. Let me put a picture of Harry and Meghan. Get that nastiness off the screen. I actually don't think, do I have anything else to say about this? Let me just check my slides. Mm, nope, I actually think that's all, <clears throat> all I had to say about it. So it's comment time and then we will peace out. But thank you everyone. Happy Monday. Thank you Dorothy Ross for the very generous donation and we've had quite a few new members last week. So we're just going to go through comments as usual, but that's pretty much all for today. Peace out everyone and thank you so much. Um, Andrine, Queen Consort is just a title, it's not a job. Camilla is going to do the same thing that she's doing now. Nothing is changing, yeah. <clears throat> But it means something to her because she's worked so damn hard for it and waited so long for it. Just imagine, just imagine waiting your whole life just for a title that really doesn't mean anything to anyone else except for you and your little Aristo circle. Um, Mona, can you comment on the approval ratings of Camilla versus Megan? I'm afraid I can't because I don't think that the approval ratings would ever be accurate because I don't think I don't think that you could do a survey that would get accurate answers if we do a survey then it's biased towards you know it's mostly going to be answered by people in the squad if they do a survey I don't know if you gov do a survey it's going to be biased mostly towards people who are right wing and probably royalists so I think that we're going to see the approval ratings in action when Camilla and Charles are crowned and if if Megan ever comes back, and my prediction is that from the reaction of um, the British public to the announcement of Camilla becoming Queen Consort today, I don't think she will be highly accepted. And from the um, reception that Megan got in person at events, at pretty much every single event that she went to, I believe that despite the media smear campaign, Megan's approval ratings overall are actually relatively high, especially in the groups where it matters the most. You know, I'm talking about young millennials and Gen Z, the future who are going to decide whether or not this institution survives. Uniquely me, I don't know Rose, but I prefer her more than Kate. <laughs> Uh, you just like the drama, don't you, uniquely me? <laughs> so do I, to be honest. I mean, let's be honest. I think my life would be pretty boring otherwise. Um, Rosa M, remember Rosa's husband is in his 60s, so he will pop off and leave Rose behind. Walk and have her. Sorry, Kate. Ouch. Queen Rose has a ring to it. It does, actually. It really, really does. Um... Yes, Sherry, if they can accept emotional support, the mediocre Middleton better be worried. Yeah, you know that the mother is worried a lot. All her work, all her work squandered. Honestly, you know, she could have just married her daughter off to some other rich aristo or business guy just looking for a trad wife. Would have been so much more peaceful, but nope. She wanted the King of England and um, didn't think about the consequences that that came with. That's what happens when you're power hungry. Um, Dale, if they can accept Camilla, they will accept anybody. <laughs> That's what William is saying, <laughs> pretty much. Um... <laughs> Angela, how will Charles act as head of the faith when 
both too are guilty of adultery. Charles reincarnated as skin tampon, shaking my head. Shaking my head too. Um, I disagree. Karen Milton will not let Rosie take this away from Kate. She schemed too, too much for this. It's so difficult to even predict how all of this will play out. Um, so it's just something that we're going to have to wait and see and watch. Because even I can't, I, I know it's going to happen, but I can't even comprehend how it will happen because it's going to be such a mess. You know, maybe that will be the time when Catherine actually grows a backbone and she tells all. Um, Doctor, do you truly think William will end up with Rose as his queen? I, I honestly do. I really do. You heard it here first. <laughs> if I'm wrong, um, I will strip and run across <laughs> Tower Bridge. <laughs> but I think that will happen. I think it will. And, you know... I don't know if you saw, actually, I think I don't have the picture. Let me just go back. This picture here of um, Rose, the woman standing next to her is Sarah Vine, the same Sarah Vine who wrote the article or numerous articles um, dragging Megan for no reason, including that infamous, I have a niggling feeling about Harry and Meghan. Now, just think about that. Rose walks in to the Trump state dinner with a woman who has written nasty articles about Meghan, bearing in mind a lot of those nasty articles were written in the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail that Meghan sued. And if you've noticed, um, Rose isn't wearing her ring here. So the woman who Prince um, William is alleging to have been running through the rose bushes with shows up to a state dinner with the journalist who writes for a paper that Meghan, Har um, sorry, Williams, um, sorry, that, that Meghan was, was suing. I mean, just, just stop and think about that for a sec. So this to me, this picture to me was a, was a pretty clear message because I don't know if anyone can look into this story, but was Kate at this, at, at the Trump state dinner? Because I never actually saw pictures of like the whole banquet hall and everybody and where they were sat inside. It's very difficult to find pictures of that. So that could be a sign that even sh she has just accepted um, what's going on, the activities that happened in the rose bushes. But I don't know if she's accepted that she could be replaced or if she believes that she could. But this picture to me is a sign. Mm. Uh, Janita, maybe Charles is the father of Camilla's children. I don't know. I don't know. Wouldn't surprise me. And also, just with these people, history repeats itself over and over again. Yeah, Carol's going to put up a fight. <laughs> she, she's, she's not a viper. She's a whole anaconda. Gonna swallow people alive. Yeah, Andrew and William is quiet since he was exposed. Andrew is too quiet. Media can't wait. So for now, they flood the papers with Camilla. Yeah. Uh, Ruth, Kate is royally screwed. No one will care when she's dumped. There's no Diana or Megan. She'll be as famous as Anne's ex-husband. 
Yeah, and I don't even know who's An- who Anne's ex-husband is. But that's really her own fault for not stepping up. I mean, the last couple of months, every single article that I see that pops up of Kate, the the story leads with what she's wearing. I remember one story leading with, um, you won't believe that um, Catherine's uh, earrings are worth two pounds. Yes, that's right, you heard, two pounds. I mean, this is what they're writing. It's not about the work. It's not about the impact created. And it's sad. I I laugh, but it's sad. Yes, I keep saying this as well. If Kate Middleton was smart, she would get that money and run. But she hasn't got to do it. To be honest with you, at this point, Kate has actually more to lose if she stays. If she goes now, she's got a lot of leverage to make sure that things swing in her favour. She can very easily play victim, um, make sure that she gets access to the children. She can get her money. Because this is a sinking ship. It's an absolute sinking There's no reason for... If she, if she stays, she's going to go down with the sinking ship. Now, if she leaves... Um, yeah, it's going to be a very, very long boat ride to shore, but she'll get to the shore. If she stays now, she's going down with the ship. So if I was her, I'd leave. She just doesn't have the guts to, you're right. Vividly, there was a long standing prophecy that Charles will never be king. I wonder why. Oh, was there a prophecy? Who who gave us the prophecy? <laughs> was was it the oracle? <laughs> was it Dumbledore? <laughs> who gave us the prophecy that Charles wouldn't be king? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Harry and Meghan just need to stay away. Stop trying to be nice to these people. Ugh. Yeah, they've set a precedent now. Of divorce and remarriage to one's mistress. Uh, Nelly, you'd rather have Carmilla as consort than Karen Katie? Really? I'd honestly, I'd honestly rather even Catherine, to be honest. Only because I'm so annoyed by what happened to Diana. For no other reason. But mostly, I just want them to all disappear. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're not fond of Camilla. They just love that she gives them access. They feel important. They feel like they're part of the club. Can you imagine, like, what are these people going to do? Can you imagine what they're going to do when the royal family just finally goes down? That's their status gone, their money gone. Okay, let's try and get through your comments. I'm very, very sleepy. Actually, very tired today. Yeah, Carol has been scheming for years. Her hands are dead, hidden Knuff. I don't think we've seen the last of Knuff, by the way. So it's, it's not Knuff, is it? Noth. The K is silent. Sorry, Noth. We haven't seen the last of him. He's going to get his karma too. Hello, Dawn. Thank you for joining us. You know, we're almost done, but <laughs> the replay will be live. There was actually a video of three um, American women, three black American women. I, I'm not sure where they were from from they might have been from their accents I think maybe they were from Chicago but like they were just going in on Camilla and like these are just you know like three girls um from somewhere in the US and they were just going off like no Dana is the people's 
you know, Prince, I wanted to actually show you the footage, but there's a lot of <laughs> swearing um, in it. Like, these girls are already ready to fight. <laughs> but it just shows that people know what the truth is. And they can't hide the truth, and they can't rewrite history. Yes, Marina, a lot of things will unravel after the Queen dies. Many realms will kick the British royals to the curb. It's already happening. Um, Ms. Levy, yeah, Denise Rolt stands up for Megan all the time. Yeah, I like Denise. She speaks truth to power quite a lot and gets a lot of backlash for it. Not just about Megan on other issues going on in the UK as well. Um... The impossible, I think it was announced about Camilla to put a spook in the Cambridge as well. Possibly. I hope they've got the food tasting rats in the royal kitchens. Because we know that poison is the favourite weapon for royals. Charles just better watch his back, to be honest. Okay, I think I'm almost at the end of your... Comments. So, who's going to get the last word of the day? Royal family engaged in revisionist history. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, everybody who's joined us today. If you're just joining us, we're about to log out. We can watch the replay. Yeah, Dory, if Diana was still here, she wouldn't be in the UK. And she wouldn't care. She wouldn't care about um, how Camilla and the Queen are acting. She'd just be living her best life. Yeah, this is this is just not the Sussexes' problem. They're not next in lineage. It's the future and the future is problem. Um, maybe I need to interview a royalist. Do you know what? I'm open to debating one, to be honest. Um, I think it'll be interesting to just ask them, um, how do you feel about paying for a bunch of grifters golden pianos? And, and, and why do you think that that is service? And what have they done for you? Maybe I should, you know. Be interesting. Yeah, the fact that Angela Levin, um, Amy, is 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 writing Camilla's biography basically just says that Prince Charles has sanctioned Levin's naughty abuse of Harry and Meghan. It's utterly bizarre. I also don't know who asked for that book. Like, who's going to buy that? I'm wondering if they will even try to have that book out before Harry's. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Angela Levin is a devil. Do you know what I think is going to happen? Um, yeah, Sheila, most people aren't really paying close attention and they're only getting the daily avalanche of royal propaganda. So what I think is going to happen is that they're getting this daily avalanche of royal propaganda. They're also being um, distracted by the hundreds of other things that are going on in the UK right now. And when the truth finally comes out, it's going to hit like a ton of bricks. And they're just going to be like, wait, but we thought that, but this doesn't seem right. Because they're being um, bombarded with propaganda, right? So when the truth hits, it's going to be like a balloon full of water bursting. Okay. Right, um, let's 
try and wrap things up. See who's going to get the last comment. <laughs> Camilla tried to cosplay Princess Diana. Say it ain't so. Yeah, I think I saw a whole article where they were talking about 20 times Camilla dressed like Diana. Oh, I'm assuming that's the same thing that they've tried to do with, with Kate and Megan. It's just weird. I don't know what they think they're accomplishing by doing that. Okay, let me try and get to the... Wow, you guys have really been thick and fast in the comment section. I've been really slow keeping up. Um... I just scrolled past the comment about Camilla's bra. <laughs> And I'm going to keep scrolling. Uh, um, brace for Camilla, brace for Camilla's children getting titles and royal senior positions. Oh, it wouldn't surprise me, but it would look so bad. Let's see. They'll, they'll be bringing out the children now. All closer to the Jubilee, probably. It's not like they hold back for, from using them for PR. Yeah, Tucker Carlson is just, he's a reality TV show host. He'll jump through hoops for clicks. It's just pathetic. Like, I don't... Um, I don't have an issue with someone having an opposing view or having a right wing view, but it's embarrassing to um, give ear time to someone who just wants to stir ish as opposed to actually having a structured logical debate that I don't respect. <laughs> Patricia. I hope Harry and Meghan and Dr. Rainbow have children. Well, they said that they were only having two children of their own. So there's nothing to stop them from adopting, no. And can you imagine if they did? Oh, that would be a story. That would be such a major story. Because I've actually never heard of any royals of any country actually adopting because they obviously would not be um entitled to succession of the throne that would be quite interesting but because harry and Meghan are no, no longer working royals what's to stop them from adopting if they want more kids that's a very interesting point <clears throat> Uh, Josie A, you said, fairly secretly filmed it and tried to address treatment of the children. The government of that country tried to shut her down and Buckingham Palace was not happy either. <clears throat> they thought she was being too political. Oh, wow. That's so interesting. Okay, I might research that in further detail and talk about that. Uh, Camilla was booed the day she married Charles, really? She'll be booed on Coronation Day, probably. Uh, Benjamin, I'm only speculating, however, I don't see nor sense or a family will last as we know it today by the time William, by the time it's William's turn, no. And I don't know what, I, I don't know why they assume that by that time, that's a whole, I mean, that's going to be what, 25 years at least? That's a whole nother generation. I don't think that they will accept if he divorces his wife. Hi, Crystal. Bye, Anastasia. Yeah, I'm going to try and peace out as well. Um, 
Yes, Megan does look stunning in this picture. Um, okay, who's going to get the last word? Simply Vigo, I'm going to give you the last word. The real royals are Megan, Doria, Harry and Diana. Absolutely true. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming this Monday evening afternoon. And I guess I will see you if, if there's anything uh, new that pops up tomorrow. I, I might do a live tomorrow. Otherwise, otherwise, I will try and do a pre-recorded. Pre-recorders are a lot of work, y'all. They are really a lot of work. I just, <laughs> uniquely me, I live for the drama. <laughs> I, I see you all up and down them divested channels, uniquely me. <laughs> so I know you live for the drama. And so do I. Okay, everyone. Have a lovely day, afternoon. Thank you once again, Dorothy Ross. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao. Thank you.